So you find the textures vary and they do all kind of vary all the way through. So it doesn't have to be exactly the same as a photo. And that's what I'm doing here. So I'm kind of making some of this up as I go along, just working all the different sections. Now the brush I'm using is a Winsor Newton brush. I don't get paid by them, so don't worry. I wish I did. So Winsor Newton brush, and it's a size double zero. And it's a Cotman range, this one, a series 111. There you go, if you're interested in looking for one of those, and that's where they go. It's a very nice little brush, it really is, because I can get a nice tip on this. It's synthetic, so it's not sable or anything like that. I do find um, synthetic brushes have got less bounce, so therefore, it gives for me, it gives me more control. And you can see how far down I'm holding the brush. I'm right next to the ferrule itself. So that means I've got a nice tight control over the details I add. Now, it all depends on you know what style you're painting and how you paint. You know, some people like to paint loose, and some people like to paint tight as well. If you're a botanical artist, you obviously like the detail, and you might be working with triple zero brushes, six zero brushes, whatever, to get even the finest of detail that you can get. But say double zero, which is as small as I tend to go, is usually quite good. I've got a, I've got a triple zero actually knocking about in my box, but um, I haven't as yet used it. So, <clears throat> Freddie, hello, Freddie. Hi from Aberdeenshire. Thank you for being on board and listening and watching me paint. So as I say, this particular one, the Great Spotted Woodpecker, is a lovely one to work on because I obviously got the red crown. So you got that on the top to, to add in there. But when I painted that, you got to really think about the colours underneath. So you don't really want to add too many colours to begin with. You've got to start really light and build up the detail as you work through it, as you normally do with watercolours. However, I've already got the um, the base tones on here. I've already got the mid tones on here. Now I'm putting the darker tones on it, but I'm also going to then put some lighter tones back over the top. I by using watercolor white, like on the other side, or acrylic, or even I say gouache. I don't use acrylic much nowadays. I've used it in the past, though. That's quite good though. But it's a bit too permanent really for something like that to work from. So that's that. I'm gonna. A little bit more. I can go close if anybody wants me to go closer. I can do. Thank you, Fred. It's very kind of you. I've got two settings on the um, on the computer where I can zoom in a little bit more. You will find it slightly blurry when I do so, though. There's nothing I can do about that, sadly. So I suppose it just kind of makes the picture that little bit bigger. What it tends to do. There we go. So you can see the detail already building up in here as well. So I can now switch colours. So I'll get my brush a wash out in the dirty and in the clean, which is what I tend to do. And let's have a quick look what else we've got there. So I'm going to go for the Burnt Umber, which is this one here. And I think what I might do, which is off camera, I've got some other colours here, look, which you can just see if I just move everything around a little bit. So I've got all the colours around the side there, which is Elizabeth and Crimson, Scarlet Lake. Um, we've also got Burnt Sienna in there. We've also got French Ultramarine as well, and even Olive Green, which I can use. So you can add all these colours into the mix for the wood itself, because wood, as I say, is so varied, it really is. So I'm going to add a little bit more in there now. This is going to be the Olive Green. Just add a bit more flavour in there. Oh, that sounds very arty, doesn't it, when you say flavour? <laughs> as my patrons know, I tend not to um, talk too arty-wise, because I'm not like that. I don't talk in art terms, so uh, they'll know me from that. I tend to say it as it is. If it's French ultramarine and a lamp black, then I'll be saying it's a blacky, a blacky, uh, a blacky blue. But they know the colours I mean anyway, because I've already explained it to them. So I'll keep it simple, not for anybody else, just for me really, to be honest with you. So there's going to be a purple colour to add into there as well. So just by adding these fine details and they all build up eventually. So the network of details gradually building as we go along. As you can see. The thing with anything like this, you don't want too many outlines, but these all little cracks within the woodwork, the kind of texture that you got in there. So I'll just add those into that part there. That's it. 
go for the burnt umber and add that one down to there. Now on the photograph itself it is a little bit richer in colour which you'll find and let's have a quick look for you again. So when you look at the photo you can see the colour I'm painting at the moment on the photograph just up there is a little bit kind of reddier within the wood but I tend, I, I don't lie, I think it's a little bit, to me it's too false even though it's not obviously. That's kind of keep that fairly dull in comparison. But I can do, I can just use a Lizard and Crimson Scarlet Lake and just a touch, just a touch of French Ultramarine will pull that around and change the colour. So for example if I wanted to, see this colour here? That's the colour I'm on about. So that's more or less what's in parts of the wood for this side. So I could wash the brush out Go into here now. This is more of a, a milky consistency. You get a little bit of water in there actually. So it's a milky consistency, and I can add that in just to change the colour of that a little bit as it goes around. Because the beauty about doing the wood itself as well is that when you start adding the white over the top, you can see all the side I've already done today. So that's taken me all day to work on that, believe it or not. So, <laughs> so yes, yes. Feel a bit of a plank. No, that's a different kind of wood, isn't it? So it's taken me all day to work on that. But I've enjoyed it. I tend to lose my time into it, even though I've been videoing at the same time for Patreon for this whole project. Um, I kind of lose myself into it. I really do. You try videoing and talking all day long, but yeah, I enjoy it. It's not a problem at all. I think that's the beauty of anything like this as well, is that, you know, if I can show you how I do things a little bit more, and it helps you to progress within your uh, your painting skills, then great. Because I've been painting now for about 40 years now. So it's been a little while. Not bad when I'm only 27, isn't it? So it's pretty good. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> so yes. Okay, so I'm working all the way down here now. Kind of building these details up gradually as I go along. Changing the colour all the time, as you can probably notice. I keep picking out different colours. We've got this purple colour at the top, which is similar to this, but it's a little bit more red in there, a little bit more Scarlet Lake in there. Now, the Scarlet Lake in question, just out of interest, by the way, is going to be this one here. That's one that I tend to use quite a lot, Scarlet Lake and Alizarin and Crimson, which are nice colours, very rich colours. And also, you don't need a lot of it because it really does populate kind of the paints. It takes over. It kind of is very, uh, very domineering colour. It really is. And the other colours I said I use a lot of is French Ultramarine because French Ultramarine is a very... <laughs> I use it a lot within a lot of my paintings. There's that one and what else do I use? Probably um, Intense Blue. That's another one I tend to use as well, which is the same as Phalo Blue, which is, if you remember, this one here. This is my colour chart, which I make for my, my paints that I work from. So Intense Blue is this one. So it's the same as Phalo, just a different name, that's all it is. And a lot of people tend to use phalo blue. But the French Ultramarine is fine, but it does part company. It is a granulating colour. So in other words, little bits come off it. It does break away a little bit in the sense of when you mix it within water. For example, when you look at this here, look, within my palette. That's got French Ultramarine. Look at the way that's separated from the colour in the bottom. See that down there? I don't know if you can just see it on the camera. So that's separated down there. So French Ultramarine can separate from other colours. It's good actually, I quite like the effect it can give and a lot of landscape artists will probably use it within skies as well. Because it gives like a bitty effect within the paint. Which is quite nice. There you go. Right. So I'm going to go for, just bring that back on shot for you so you can just see what I'm doing. There you go. This is Burnt Umber but it's also got a little bit of the purple colour in there as well. So it's Burnt Umber, Lizard and Crimson, um, Scarlet Lake, and I think just a touch of Lamp Black, just again to change the look of it all and how it goes. Right, let's have a quick look at the computer screen for you. So what we got on there? So we've got Beth. Hello, Beth Larson from Hello from Arizona, USA. Hello there. How are you today? Susan Jordan. Hello, Susan. Hi, Paul. Wow, loving this one. I hope so. So latest Patreon works will be one of the Patreon uh, tutorials. Uh, Freddie, do you still have paintings you did 40 years ago? We need to see them. No, you don't need to see them, Freddie. <laughs> you would laugh. You really would, honestly. 
Um, in fact, if you look at some of the paintings I did 10 years ago, you'd probably giggle. You'd have a bit of a belly laugh going on. Um, I've, even though I've been painting all, you know, say all my adult life, I suppose, and young life. I started someone who was 11 years old, so it's nearly 40 years actually, not quite 40 years. With my uncle, who lives in uh, St Ives, Peter Hopkinson. There you go. So if he's watching, he goes on Facebook. Hello Peter, hello Uncle Peter. And we used to go painting together using oil paints uh, around the Derbyshire landscape all them years ago. And uh, that's when I started as uh, one of the youngest members within the Chesterfield Art Society in Derbyshire. And I've been painting ever since and I just love it. Painting, drawing, using pen and ink, um, say graphite. Also coloured pencil work I've done as well, CP work as people call it. That's quite, quite nice to work with. Never really used pastels to that degree. But, uh, you know, we'll see. But no, as for some of the previous paintings, Freddie, um, <laughs> yeah, I haven't got that many, to be honest. But yes, I'll have to dig some out of my fold. I've got some drawings I can probably dig out. That's probably the best bet. So I used to draw things like, you know, portrait. I did a lot of portraits years ago as well. As well, I did a few landscapes, but mostly it was portraits and wildlife. Um, so I've done quite a lot of human portraits years ago and I used to enjoy doing those actually some very large ones as well so you have to try try painting very big noses okay so I'm gradually building this up as you can see all the way through but I want to look at individual sections on here as well and what I can do I can either lift paint off or I can add paint on now what do I mean by that all I mean is if you get some tissue a bit of kitchen roll like this lot Good quality this one as well, by the way. I'm not going to tell you where I got it from. Um, what you can do, if you get a clean, damp brush, you can gently tease the paint backward and forward. So keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, and then lift. Then you've got a little highlight, and you can just see on the tissue where that is. So I'll tell you what I might do. I'll try and zoom in a little bit more for you on the screen and uh, see if we can get there. Darlene, hello there. The secret is a steady hand. <laughs> this is so much fun. Thank you, Darlene. Freddie, yes. Okay. Liz Allen. Yes, I don't have a steady hand at all. <laughs> well, I see the technique I'm using at the moment for all this area is using a very um, very shaky hand, which actually works really well. Um, I'm going to see if I can get a little bit closer for you. So I don't know if that's any better. So please say yay or nay. You may find it's a little bit blurry, and if it is, well, I'm sorry about that. I can't do anything about that, <laughs> because basically what it's doing is just making the picture bigger, which is what it does on the on the software on the computer. So, so bear that in mind. Okay, that's that. So I need feedback, please. Thank you very much. So any questions you've got, please uh, post them down below. Just stick them down there for me, and I'll try and read them in between painting. So if you've got any questions you want to fire at me, about painting in general, about the birds, which we, Joe and myself, my partner Joe and myself, we tend to watch a lot of birds. We go bird watching a lot, we enjoy ourselves doing that. I think our neighbours, don't you Karen? I think our neighbours think we're probably a little bit balmy, but we're not, we're not, we're nice people, honest. <laughs> okay, so just working on this here. I want to go for some more dark in there now because I want to look at some of the overall shapes. All the small shapes, I'm not too worried about, as I say, where they go, because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Nobody's going to know. You're nobody's going to look at the photograph and say, Paul, do you realise that that little bit there is not quite the same as a main photo? Let's get rid of that water run. So I'm not too worried about that, because it's not the same. However, when you're painting a bird, a dog, a cat, a, a chimpanzee, an ant, actually, no, I've never painted an ant, seeing that. When you're painting any form of wildlife, then normally you've got to try and get the proportions right, you've got to try and get the eye right. Just as if you were doing human portraits, it's got to be right, otherwise it looks a bit odd, you know? So you've got to get things spot on. So for anything like the uh, the young woodpecker here, or Woody, should we just call him Woody? I've really concentrated on trying, making sure that I've got all the details as close as I can get them within the woodpecker itself. So it's all within the video, which will be on, obviously, Patreon. I keep plugging that, I know, but it's, it's, that's the idea normally as well. So bear that in mind that, so when you come to something like this, or stonework, brickwork, woodwork, obviously like this, um, grass, water, that can all vary. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. As long as it's a representation 
of what you see in the photograph. That's the main thing. So just bear that in mind, okay? Right, so see what people have got to say there. I hope you can see this all right. Uh, okay, very fun. Okay. Come on, we can all use a good laugh. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Tess. Oh, Tess. What's that mean, Liz? <laughs> oh, Tess. Oh, Tess, you are but a fool. No, that's not right, is it? No, of course not. Okay, so add some more into there. I want to look at where some of these details go as well. Oh, I'll tell you what I will do. I'm going to add a bit more purple in there. Again, you know what I said about that blue? Look how that's separated on here, look. See that? So that's your French Ultramarine just to the side here. A little bit of purple in it. It's just completely separated from the red paint. But again, I do like that effect, so it's not a problem at all. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of this blue and purple colour. If you add too much paint in one go, like I've just put a blob there, not a problem. You can either just dry your brush on some kitchen roll and lift the paint off, like so. Or you can just move it around and make use of it, which is what I tend to do most of the time. But if it's a big blob, you know, it's uh, you can just lift it off. To be honest with you, you know, you're in control of the water itself. You determine where that water goes, okay? And the water will only go where the paper's wet, obviously. So if I put a line of water down the side here, the water will just run down that line. It won't go anywhere else, it'll just run down that line. You try one thing, right? If you've got watercolours and you're, you are, you know, you enjoy playing with watercolours, do one thing for me when you get next chance, okay? Oh, that was really northern, that one. Oh, lad, I. <laughs> when you get the chance next time round, try one thing, and that's just get some water on your brush. Get a large brush, like a size, let's have a quick look, like a size five like this one here. Just wet that a minute. So, something like this, and just do a line of water, squiggle line of water down, fully load it, then drop the colour into the top of that line of water. Make sure that your board's on a slight angle. Then drop another colour in it, and another colour in it, and you get a lovely kind of rainbow effect of colour coming down. But remember, the paint will only follow where the water is. It won't go anywhere else. You determine where it goes. You're in charge. All right? It's you that, de that decides that at the end of the day, as I do with this painting. The top of this painting, by the way, will be um, mostly moss on the tree. So that's going to be a very detailed moss, and I've got some different techniques I'm going to work on that for Patreon. I can't show you that tonight because it wouldn't be fair on my patrons because they're going to, obviously they're, they're um, on there to, to learn from me anyway. So that's uh, something I will be showing them on how that all works. But um, but yeah, so I'm going to paint moss, which is quite, you know, it can be tricky sometimes, but I have my ways and methods of doing that. Because it's quite a lot of detail within moss as well, you find. Right. Okay, anybody else comment in there? Let's have a quick look. Hee hee hee, I did edit. <laughs> Test to yes, thank you, Liz. <laughs> How many hours do you have in this bird? Darlene. Well, Darlene, so far, that's probably, uh, let, me, let me just contemplate this, hang on. Um, how many fingers have I got? Okay, one, two, three, four. Painted today, and the other day, and the day before that, I suppose effectively, I'm thinking, is any steam coming out my ears? Hang on a minute. I'm just thinking. No, that's that smoke coming out of my ears now. I suppose all in all, there's probably about between 12 and 15 hours in this so far, as a guess, okay? Without kind of calculating. I don't sit here with a stopwatch, obviously, so it's something like that. Because obviously I put so much detail into this. And because I want it, I'm doing this obviously for Patreon, as I keep saying, I want my members there to have something to really get the, the teeth into if they want to, you know. So they can do that if they want to. They can really get the teeth into this. And the beauty about them painting something like this is that it's always going to be available to them. It's not going to only be on, on there for one month. Like all the other 22 video tutorials I've got there for them now, they're always there. So even though it's really detailed, they can come back to it, do a little bit more six months down the line. That's the beauty of it all, you know. So that's why um, they're on there, because they can... There's no rush to do a painting. Something I always tell people, never rush a painting, okay? Never rush a painting. Start doing things like that and you can make a mess. Especially when you get near the end of a painting as well. 
So just bear that in mind. So thank you, Darlene, for that question. Very kind of you. Any more questions, please fire at Will. And whoever Will is, I do apologise. So just a few more down there. Uh, a bit more. Really building this up now, just just gradually, bit by bit. I know it doesn't look like I'm actually doing a lot, but I am. These are just the finest of touches all the time. I'm also making use of the brush as well when it's nearly dry. So even though there's not a lot of paint on the brush now, you can really use like a dry effect. So if I get a bit of scrap watercolor paper here, look, I'll show you what I mean. So the brush is nearly dry. I can use the edge of the brush if I want to and skim the paper to create just a light texture like that. And that's what I'm doing just for some of these little areas, just creating a very fine texture within the wood. Now, when I add the watercolor white over the top of that, it's going to go very similar to this side, but not quite as much because on the photograph, even though I'm not copying it exactly, on the photograph, there are some white highlights in there. So I have to make sure I've got some over that side, just so you could balance the painting as well, which would be better for that. So that's worth noting that as well. Um, okay. So let's have a quick look. Oh, yeah, there's, yeah. Good question. I was just going to ask that. Freddie, by the way, Paul, I'm Freddie on here, but you know me as Lynn on YouTube. Hello, Lynn on YouTube. Hey, the one who is rubbish at watercolors. <laughs> Lynn, I'm sure you're not. You know you can learn. You know you can learn. There's, anything's possible in this day and age, it really is. I've taught people in the past without, I'm not trying to blow my own trumpet or anything like that, who have said to me, like, Paul, I can't paint. I haven't got the patience for it. There's one person I know quite close to here that said that to me once. And um, they can paint. After just having a few lessons, they, they could paint. And they couldn't believe what they painted. I think mean, she painted a robin. Did I say she? No. <clears throat> Sorry. Did that person paint a robin? I think so, yes. And she was over the moon. This, sorry, this person was over the moon with what uh, they produced. Just with some instructions. It's like anything, though, um, Lynn. It's like anything. When you're trying to learn for the first time, you need some starting blocks. You need you need some foundations to work from to begin with. You know, you can't build a house unless you've got the foundations down, can you? You know, you can't start putting the walls up without any, any structure underneath. I tend to akin that to the way a painting is produced. You need the foundations down first, and then you start building on top of those foundations all the detail, so you've got everything in place to begin with. That also applies with the learning side of things as well, is that once you've learned the basics, and you know how to use the brush, you know even how to hold the brush, you know you know how the water works, how much water to add into your colour, into your, into your pans, you know, into your, into your mixing palette. That all comes through, through, um, through experience and through having the right tuition as well. I'm not trying to blow my own trumpet, <laughs> but you know what I mean, Lynn. That um, gives us some ideas on what I mean. So that's I firmly believe in all of that. I mean, people say, yes, you've got to have some inept talent to begin with, but I also feel that anybody could learn. Um, and everybody's got their own way of painting as well, their own style, their own way, even though they don't realise it as well. Because when my patrons have... I've had, my patrons sent to all my... Um, a lot of my tutorials and they'll post that on patreon what they've painted and um, even I'll say for example the raccoon which everybody painted they did a cracking job of that but every one just about was that little bit different you know even though it's the same instruction the same brushes the same colors just about and so on um, I say the same brushes I mean the same kind of fine tip brushes because everybody's unique everybody's different in their own way so yeah you can learn honestly trust me I'm a doctor. Actually, no, I'm not. But you know what I mean. There you go. Right, so that's the <laughs> detail working on that. I'm losing the plot there, I know. How long have I been on for? 20, oh, blimey, really that long? 28 minutes, heck. I'm going to go in a minute. So if you've got any questions you want to fire at, well, I've said that again. If you've got any questions you want to fire at me, in fact, that's not a good idea. If you've got any questions, please ask away, and I'll do my utmost to answer for you, okay? So just let me know if you've got anything you want to ask. Um, and if you see this video after I've gone live, because I'm going to save it here on, on Facebook. So if you want to replay it to listen to what I've said and what I've spoken about, then you're more than welcome to. We'll stay here. Okay, I'm also going to post it onto YouTube later this evening as well, because I'm recording this at the same time. 
Um, so please post a comment down below. I will still see that message. I still get notifications from Facebook. And if it's on YouTube, I get notifications from them as well when people make a comment. So you're more than welcome to comment after the event, okay? So just bear that in mind. Right, okay. The next thing I'm gonna do very quickly. Oh, by the way, hang on, what else have we got? Oh, I read that one, Freddie, sorry. Love watching you paint though, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thanks, that's all right, no problem at all. Okay, Darlene, um, what's that one? You put awesome detail in all the paintings and I'm always in awe. Um, I have all those birds in my yard. I've painted uh, paintings of them, but don't know, oh yeah, don't know how to, this helps. Thank you, that's all right. Sean, you're so generous with your time, thank you. Sean, you're more than welcome, and so are you. Everybody that's watching, including, well, everybody, you're more than welcome. Oh, I'm just gonna, just a little bit more down there a minute. And then, just to add a little bit of watercolor white. Now, all that is, is this here, look. I'm not gonna go into the details of the watercolor white, or shall I? I did say, didn't I, at the beginning of the video, I'm gonna show you how I add the highlights at the end. Shall I do that? Yeah, go on then. So this is watercolor white, which has been in my palette all day. And the beauty about watercolors, as I said many times in the past, is that you can just re-wet it. You know, I can come back to a palette from two months ago and uh, re-wet it and it can reactivate it and carry on again. The beauty about watercolors is that they're, they're, there's no smell, they're user-friendly, there's not much in the way of mess as well, and uh, you can easily pack them away in a, in a drawer as well. It doesn't take a lot of space up. You know, I'm in one room here, but my main watercolor painting space is one table. That is it. I've got my main board here. I've got a, water, a double water pot by the side of me as well, and my palette. That's it. So watercolor, clean, doesn't take up a lot of room, and it's, uh, it's a nice medium to kind of work with and relax into. So watercolor white. I'm going to add just a little bit here and there, just a tiny little bit. I'm not going to go too much in this because it's not fair on my patrons who obviously subscribe and um, donate to my Patreon channel because obviously they learn all this with me so I can't show you too much, it wouldn't be fair on them as I say but I'll uh, kind of guide you a little bit without talking about it too much <laughs> Hola, como esta, como esta? Mi nombre es Señor Paul Hopkinson, buenos dias <laughs> okay. I'll forget that then. Okay, and a little bit more down there. As I mentioned, there's not quite as much on the white side of the whites on this side of the uh, woodpecker hole. I remember last year, um, my partner and Joe, Joe and myself uh, were down in the local woods looking at our, we've got um, say 70 bird boxes down there which we'll look after and um, we're just checking one of the boxes and we heard this one heck of a commotion and it was a uh, a woodpecker nearby in the hole young in there as well we couldn't see them I don't think but they're all there you know we could hear them what a heck of a racket was making as well because we were nearby you know so it's quite interesting to see them especially at this time of the year when breeding season starts as well so it's had a few little highlights in here now I can tone these highlights down if need be as well again that's something else I can show you another time probably We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, it's a little bit more down there and here. So now you can see the differences it's already making. Once you get the lights, well, let's just say you get the light colors, you get your mid-tones, you get your darks, and then you put the highlights on. And the highlights can either be used by watercolor white, acrylic, which as I said, you can use, but acrylic paint's more permanent, so therefore once you put it on there, you can't really take it off. Or you could use gouache as well, or gouache, depends how you pronounce it. So it's entirely your choice what you want to use. But that'll give you some ideas on how I paint this, uh, well, painting wood really with this woodpecker. 